Well, hello there. Um, this is the video tutorial of how to do a vapor lowering, vapor pressure lowering problem using Raoult's law. And <clears throat> we're putting this up here um, because like, there was some confusion with the way I wrote down the equation during lecture. Um, so <clears throat> you'll find on Canvas this problem, and it asks, what will the vapor pressure of a solution prepared by mixing 55.5 grams of solid aluminum nitrate, molar mass 213.0 grams per mole, 235 grams of water at 25 degrees C. The vapor pressure of pure water at 25 degrees C is again 23.76 torr. So how do we approach this? The first thing is to know what equation to use. You're going to find this uh, at the end of the exam on the crib sheet as written. Like so. There you go. This is Routes Law. It says that right on the crib sheet, Routes Law. Bang, here's the equation. We have the pressure of the solution of interest that we're looking for. Time is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent, not the solute, times the normal vapor pressure of the solvent, which is going to be the 23.76 uh, torr. So first we'll get the number of moles of water. We have 235 grams of water, molecular well, mass is 18.02, and so that's 13.0 moles of water. And so the next step then. is the number of moles of aluminum nitrate, and that is obtained simply from the amount that we have, the given molar mass, and that's 0 0.261. of aluminum nitrate. Okay, now here's the key to this. This is the situation where we have a non-volatile but electrolyte that's dissolved in the water. Not a non-electrolyte like sugar or something like that, but an electrolyte. So we need the total number of moles of solute that are present, which we get from the component ions that are formed from this thing when it dissolves. So sugar, which is a molecular, sucrose I'm talking about, is a molecular compound. It doesn't dissociate in water. You don't have to do anything in problems like that. That was the first vapor pressure loading problem we did uh, in Friday's lecture. <clears throat> so what do we do now? We convert this to the number of moles of solute. So, what happens with this stuff when we dissolve it in water is it breaks apart into its constituent ions. And so we have three nitrates in there. And so we're going to get four solute components. So for every molecule of this that dissolves, there's four ions that are formed in solution. 
for every mole of this that dissolves. There's one mole of aluminum three plus and three moles of aluminum of nitrate rather present in the solution for a total of four moles of solute. So what we've got to do is multiply that number by four. So this four here is due to the four solute components, one, two, three, four. And that works out to be 1.04 moles. So now then, if you want the mole fraction of the solvent, the solvent being water, what we do is we take thirteen moles of water, which we have, and we add that to this amount plus the moles of solute components, not the moles of aluminum nitrate. So One point oh four moles of solute, and add it to thirteen moles of water. And when you do that, your mole fraction is zero point nine two six dimensionless number. So now we plug that into. equation that was originally up here. Multiply it out and you're going to get 22.0 Tor. So that's how one does a problem when you have an electrolyte dissolved in the solution. And hopefully that helps with clarity um, of doing one of these problems.